Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Glory to you, O God. You raised Jesus from the grave, bringing us victory over death and giving us eternal life. Glory to you, O Christ. For us 
and for our salvation you overcame death and opened the gate to everlasting life. Glory to you, O Holy Spirit. You lead us into the truth and breathe new life into us. Glory to you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We confess our sins to God. If we have fallen into despair, Lord, forgive us. If we have failed to hope in you, Lord, forgive us. If we have been fearful of death, Lord, forgive us. If we have forgotten the victory of Christ, Lord, forgive us. May the living God raise us from despair, give us victory over sin, and set us free in Christ. Amen. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. We read from the Gospel according to St Mark, chapter 16, beginning to read at verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early, on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. May God help us to understand his word. Amen. Game changer. It's one of those terms that has entered modern discourse quite recently, and it is used in a variety of contexts, without anybody stopping to explain what it means. It comes from sport, and originally referred to a brilliant piece of play by one of the participants, which completely changes the complexion of the game and its eventual outcome. One might remember David Beckham scoring a goal against Greece, which enabled England to qualify for the World Cup. Or Botham's century against Australia that changed the course of the Headingley Test of 1981. The game was completely different afterwards. It was a game changer. There are similar moments in detective fiction when the investigator suddenly discovers a new clue or rediscovers an old one and gets new inspiration. And suddenly, instead of floundering around in the dark, he or she knows who did it. 
The phrase is also used, probably overused, by political commentators to describe events, speeches, policies or accidents which have such an effect on the electorate that they change the result of an election. It is often said of the Sun's headline on the morning of the 1992 election, if Labour wins, will the last person to leave Britain please turn out the lights? That it changed the result of that election. Or perhaps that certain unfortunate remarks accidentally caught on a microphone made by Gordon Brown changed the result of the 2010 general election. Well, if any of these can be described as a game changer, the resurrection of Jesus is the one that beats them all. Before the resurrection, Jesus was a marginal Jewish teacher whom a small minority of his compatriots believed to be the Messiah. And he was far from being the only one. There were many other failed would-be messiahs at the time whose names are known only to those who choose to read ancient history. And before the resurrection, it looked very much as if Jesus would be just another one of those. To his believing followers, it appeared that God's plan to save his people had failed completely and all Jesus' ministry had been for nothing. One more disappointment on top of all the ones that went before. But the resurrection was a game changer. No other would-be Messiah had come back to life after death. If death was seen as the ultimate failure for someone who claimed to be the Messiah, coming back to life was the ultimate victory. Instead of his teaching being the rumblings of a deluded marginal figure, they were now the words of God. God stamped his approval on them by raising Jesus from the dead. Instead of Jesus' death being a victory for his enemies and for the forces of evil, it was now a demonstration of Jesus' faithfulness to God and God's love for humankind. It became the way that God could deal with the wrongdoing and rebellion of human beings and by which he could finally defeat the forces of evil. And it changed Jesus from being a deluded blasphemer who appeared to make himself equal with God into God with us in a way people found difficult to explain and still do. But there is yet more. Now Jesus has come back from the dead. Now he can die no more. He is alive forever with each one of us, every step of the way. And he has won the victory for us as well as for himself. He offers up to each one who believes in him the promise that we too will be raised from death and we too will live forever. Jesus is a game changer in more ways than one. Amen. In the power of the resurrection, we offer our prayers to God. Let us pray. Remember, O Lord, in your love, the church throughout the world, those recently baptised and confirmed, and all those who minister to others. May your whole church know your power and be a sign that Christ is risen. Lord of life, hear us in your love.
Remember in your love the world you have made. Those who seek a fair and proper use of the world's resources. Those who strive for justice and peace among the nations. May the whole earth be transformed by mercy and rejoice in hope. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Remember in your love those who suffer. We pray for the victims of violence and injustice, for those who mourn, for those who are victims of coronavirus, for those who have lost their lives in war and conflict. May all in need find comfort, strength and freedom in the living Christ. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Remember in your love those who have died. Those who have confessed to the faith and those whose faith is known to you alone. May all your children receive grace and light according to their needs and come at last to share with all the saints in life eternal. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Gracious God, we ask these prayers through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Saviour. Amen.
God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.